Let's be honest, we all know that healthy eating is important. But I'm guessing that you probably don't do it as much as you know you should. And who could blame you when you have things like pizzas, potato chips, kebabs, and of course, the halal snack pack. Surely that counts in some way towards your daily vegetable count. Well, not so much. You see, as it turns out, not all food is the same. Sure, it might come in the same way and go out the same way, but what happens in between is a very different story. We all know that food is fuel. You put food in, your body breaks it down, gives you some energy, and then discards the rest. But as it turns out, this isn't the whole story. What if I told you that the food you eat impacts your brain function from your focus to your emotions, even your mood? Or what if I told you that the food you eat impacts your hormones and metabolism, and that by eating the right types of food, you can literally turn your body into a fat-burning machine? without having to starve yourself from one of the latest fad diets or ridiculous amounts of exercise. Or what if I told you that the food you eat literally impacts your genetic expression, turning on and off disease-causing genes. What science is now calling epigenetics, meaning above genetics. Basically meaning that the food you eat and the lifestyle you lead has a direct impact on the way that your genes are expressing. You see, food isn't just fuel. Food is information. Every single bite that you eat is setting off genetic programs that are either contributing to your health or breaking it down. For instance, a study completed by the University of Alabama found that cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, kale, cabbage, and cauliflower contain compounds called sulforaphane and I3C, which have been shown to regulate genes responsible for the elimination of cancer cells. In basic terms, anti-cancer. In fact, the study actually states, cruciferous vegetables are not only an important source of nutrients, but perhaps a key to eliminating cancer as a life-threatening disease. I'm sure you've all heard someone say, what's the point of eating healthy? I'm most likely going to get some kind of chronic disease one day. Diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's, etc. Sadly, these diseases have become so commonplace in our society that most people just see them as a normal part of aging and something that can't be avoided. But the truth is that these alarming rates of chronic diseases are not a normal part of aging, but a reflection of the unhealthy food and lifestyle choices that most of us have adopted especially the food we eat. You see, there is a big difference between what a Big Mac and a Big Salad is going to be doing to your body. While the Big Mac might taste good, this highly processed meal is full of trans fats, not to mention flavor enhancers and preservatives, which your body doesn't probably recognize, causing your genes to try to protect themselves by setting off an inflammatory response throughout the body leading to chronic inflammation if done on a continuous basis. And chronic inflammation is at the root cause of almost all chronic diseases affecting our world today. Whereas a big salad full of healthy whole foods contains an abundance of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, coenzymes, macronutrients and micronutrients, all of which your body easily recognizes and uses to maintain cells, provide energy and regulate your hormones and genes. Okay, so let's take an even deeper look into why healthy eating truly is so important. Food and the brain. One of the biggest things affected by the food you eat is your brain. Choosing the right or wrong foods will determine how well or not so well your brain functions. Essential fatty acids. For instance, essential fatty acids like omega-3 and 6 found in nuts, fatty fish, avocado and seeds are literally used for the creation of cell membranes and optimal brain function. While long-term consumption of unhealthy trans and saturated fats can actually impair brain function which is thought to be a leading cause of Alzheimer's in later life. Proteins and amino acids. 
Proteins and amino acids found in whole plant and animal products influence how we feel and behave. You see, when you eat a healthy whole foods, protein dense food, it actually stimulates brain cells to release mood altering neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, the brain's feel good chemicals. Fruits and vegetables. Eating fruits and vegetables high in antioxidants strengthens your brain to fight off free radicals and thus enable your brain to work more efficiently and for longer periods of time. Low GI foods. Glycemic index refers to the amount of time that it takes for the body to break down carbohydrates into usable energy. You see what happens when you eat a high glycemic food like white bread it causes a rapid release of glucose in the body which leads to a spike in blood sugar which is always followed by the dreaded dip which negatively affects attention span and mood. On the other hand, when you eat a low GI food like quinoa for instance, it causes a slow glucose release, which leads to a more steady level of energy, attentiveness and focus. Food and the gut. Another reason that healthy eating is so important is that the food we eat has a direct impact on the health and diversity of our gut microbiome. The state of our gut microbiome, which is made up of billions of bacteria, is now being linked to everything from autoimmune diseases, diabetes, Parkinson's, cancer, and even anxiety and depression. In fact, the bacteria in your gut are responsible for everything from nutrient assimilation to hormone regulation, neurotransmitter production like serotonin and dopamine, and even the creation of vitamins and nothing affects the state and health of your microbiome more than the food that you consume. Consuming an unhealthy diet full of unhealthy fats, processed foods, high sugar and highly processed carbohydrates actually throws out the balance of bacteria in the gut leading to a proliferation of bad bacteria. In fact, your craving for high sugar and high carbohydrate foods may not be entirely your own fault, but an overpopulation of bad bacteria in the gut causing you to crave unhealthy foods. This so-called dysbiosis is being linked to a myriad of health issues and diseases. On the other hand, you can dramatically shift your microbiome to have more healthy bacteria. In fact, the health of your microbiome is now believed to be one of the major keys to optimal health or disease. So it is important to eat a diet that encourages a healthy microbiome. This can be done with a healthy whole foods based diet basically anything that doesn't come from a packet, high amounts of non-starchy, fiber-rich vegetables, healthy fats, and low sugar. But one of the most powerful ways of shifting your microbiome is through the consumption of fermented foods and probiotics. Fermented foods contain literally billions of good bacteria. These are things like sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, yogurt, and kefir all of which help to grow and maintain a diverse and thriving microbiome. It's also important to be eating prebiotic foods, which help to feed good bacteria. Think of it like fertilizer for your garden, only this is for your inner garden. Leading to the growth and diversity of good bacteria in the gut and therefore leading to a healthier and more vibrant body. Some prebiotic foods include onions, leeks, coconut, asparagus, and sweet potato. So food matters. It matters quite a lot. This doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the occasional treat or indulgence. There's nothing wrong with that. But just remember that food has a massive impact on the way you feel, the way you think, and the way that your body and brain function. So the next time you go to make a decision between a donut and a piece of fruit, just remember that food is more than fuel. Food is information. So choose wisely. All right guys, well, there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to show some appreciation and give this video a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then hit the subscribe button up there. And as always guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.